Hey, what is going on everyone? We're gonna have some fun with web design today. A common question that I get asked a lot is, where do I find and how do I create the background graphics that I use on my websites? So what I'm gonna do is share with you my process on how I use Figma to create background graphics. We're gonna look at a few different methods and you're gonna be able to follow along. And I got a few tricks on my sleeve as well when it comes to adding them to Elementor. So I'm gonna show you how to not only create the graphics inside of Figma, but then how are we going to export them? A few tricks that I have and how do we properly add them to our Elementor websites and we'll build a few banners together. Let's start over here in Figma and I've created a few simple banners right here, just some text and buttons with the header. There are no graphics or anything added to it and this is all being done on the free version of Figma so you do not need a paid version for anything that we are doing. Now all these are just you know a very basic banner with the text and call to actions. What we're going to do is add some graphics like this so that way we can make our banner stand out. And what we have here are three different methods for creating graphics inside of Figma. This first one, this is going to be using shapes inside of Figma. The second method right here, we're going to be using masking and images, but we're going to pair that with shapes as well. And then this method right here, which is perhaps my favorite, this is using already pre-built UI templates right here and then adjusting them tweaking them out to fit our design and our brand then we have over here our elementor banners so i've already created the plain basic banners again just very simple very plain nothing fancy inside of it just some text and call to action buttons i'm going to show you how we could create these background images but then how could we upload them because each of these right here would take a different method to export and upload and I got a few tricks as well. So let's go over here and let's start with our first style. And this is going to be creating shapes inside of Figma. So I'm going to create a rectangle right here and we're going to basically mimic this right here. Let's go back over and I am going to add a stroke. I'm going to match the color of the stroke to the color of the color scheme right here so let me make this let me see a 60 enough and you know what this looks a bit thin i'm going to take this to 100 and make the border 100 pixels because i want a bit of a thickness in this and then i'm going to remove the fill next up right click while you are on the elements and select on outline stroke this is going to turn it into a vector and this is what i use all the time i'm always outlining the strokes so when it's ready to become a vector but just note that once you do that you don't have borders or anything like that anymore so get your border width right first now let me zoom in here it's going to make it a lot easier i'm going to round it off so I'm going to select these outside corners right here while I'm holding down the shift key. So that way I could adjust the border radius across all of them. So I'm going to take this to about 40. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the inside corners here. But on these inside corners, I'm not going to make them as big. I'm going to turn, I'm going to take these to about 20 pixels border radius all right next up let's rotate it now i'm going to select shift and then i just put the cursor to the corner until we get this little angle arrow right here and then we could turn it and i'm going to make this well you could put it any way that you want i'm just going to leave it like this for right now all right now i'm going to undo the color right here because i'm going to turn this into a gradient let me select on gradient. I'm going to move this side over here and then I'm going to take the other side. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the color and use the eyedropper and I'm going to choose the dark color of the background. I want to mask this into the background a bit and then I'm going to take the opacity of it and turn it to all the way opacity zero. I'm going to go back over here to the colored side and I'm going to change the opacity here as well. I'm just going to adjust it to where I feel like, you know, it's not overwhelming, but it still contrasts, you know, pretty nicely to the design. As you can see here, it's not bright in your face, but it's still there. And another little trick as well for web design, 
we got our call to actions here. It's useful to have whatever graphic that you're using pointing to those call to actions. So this is pointing in that direction. It helps the human eye navigate there. This is all uh, subliminal type of stuff in web design. But all right, let's go ahead and take this. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over. And now we got a cool graphic here. I'm going to take this and I could even go a little bit further because you can see the background here. Uh, I could have some fun with this. Like I could go over to my effects, change it from drop shadow to background blur, select the little sun icon, and then I could take this to about 10 and then I could give it a bit of a blurred effect. And I could do the same thing here. In fact, if we want to have more fun with this and really geek out, well, there's a lot that we could do by pairing this up with other shapes. All right, so we got this. I'm going to click on both of them. I'm going to hold down Command and G to group it. Next up, I want to create some light inside of this. I want to add more light. So I'm going to use a new shape. I'm going to press O for oval to create an oval shape. We're not going to need a big one. You know, it doesn't have to be all that big. Let's select the color we want to use. I'm going to use a, a purple one and then I'm going to go to effects to layer blur, select the sun icon and then we're going to say let's try 300 first. It's going to be kind of big. All right. You could barely see it if I open it up. Now I can see it a bit more. Let me duplicate this. I'm going to press command and D to duplicate it. And now on this one, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to put this darker color right here. Or we could even put like something that stands out a bit more. That's pretty cool right there. Let's do that. Next up, we need to rearrange all of this over here. So that way we have our blurred sections. In fact, let me group these together. I'm going to call these uh, blurred uh, shapes. And then these over here, I'm going to call uh, just a graphic. I'm going to keep it really simple. And let's move these below it so that way they're underneath it. And now we have a graphic and we could play around with it. We could adjust it. And this is just a really easy way to use shapes to create some graphics and get a bit creative. So we could even do something. Let me hide this right here. Let me take an icon. If you got, say, a logo, well, maybe you could also use a logo in the same way as well. So I could take my logo right here it's already turned into a vector so i don't need to outline the stroke but what i could do here is go ahead and use the gradients let me move this over i'm going to change this side and do the same exact thing use a color picker select the background and then change the opacity to zero and then from over here i'm also going to adjust the opacity and then I could adjust this a bit, play around with it. And now you could, you know, if you do have, say, a project where you got a logo that could be the graphic, this is a very subtle way that you could add this to your banner. Now, let me go ahead and remove this. I'll put this over here. I like to keep my graphics around because I always find different ways to use them in different situations. I like to save graphics and this is just having fun and geeking out. Now, let's try this next one right here and this one we're going to use shape so right here let me go ahead and use a rectangle in fact i'm going to create a square i'm going to mimic a bit of what we did inside of the example right over here this is just one image with two shapes that are combined and turned into a mask okay i know that might sound complicated but it really really isn't so i'm going to select on our rectangle over here I'm going to go to the border radius, but click on the independent corners. And then from here, I'm going to, I'm going to give this something crazy like 300 and then this side also 300. All right. That way we get that, you know, sort of that half circle a bit. Now let me go ahead and duplicate this. All right. And I'm going to hover around until I could see where I could uh, rotate it. Let's rotate it. I can move this in over here. Oh, we can make this connect as well if we want to get really uh, precise with it. 
But here we go. We're just going to do it really quick because there's a lot of cool things you could do with this style here. Now, the next thing we got to do is combine it and turn it into a vector. So the way we're going to do this is to click on both of them, holding down your shift button so they're both selected. Go up over here, select on union. Now, if you see over here in our tab, you should see a union right over here. And then I am going to turn this into a vector. I'm going to outline the stroke. And then the next thing you need to do is find what the image that you want to use. So I already got an image over here. Let me pull this up onto my board. Okay, this thing is huge. So let me go ahead and resize it. And I want to just make sure that the image is covering the graphic. That's it. We want to basically shrink it down to where it covers. We don't want any of that shape showing. And now you should see your image on top of your union just like this. Now go over here to the mask icon and then select on mask. And that's how we create this mask. And you could create all kinds of different shapes. Uh, we'll take a look at some examples, but there are all kinds of things that we could do using this method right here. In fact, you could use different images as well. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to go to my Unsplash plugin and you'll see how easy it is to change this image around. Uh, let me go to, I'm going to put in food. Let's say this is for a food uh, website right here. I could select a food image. And now we can start to create shapes with food in it. We could also move this around as well to find the right fit. Like this would be kind of dope if, let me see, maybe I can, yep, I can shift that around. Check that out. I could do something like that, okay? So you could have a lot of fun. The main thing is you got to make sure that this image is going around because you don't want to do that. It's going to cut off from your mask. All right, now we could do a bit more. We could combine this with shapes. First off, let's go back, select O for oval. Let's create a small circle right here. Let me turn this off. Let's choose a color. I am going to choose this orange color right over here. And then let's go to effects. Let's select on layer blur. And then I'm going to put, let me put 300. See how that looks. Okay, you can't barely see it. So you got to uh, play around with it, adjust it. And, you know, if you make it bigger, you're going to see more of it. So let's go ahead and put it there. I'm going to move this behind my masked group right here. This is my image. So that way it is not messing with it. Okay, let me select this and I could center it. In fact, I could move it around and center it a bit more. If it is too bright like this, you're going to want to adjust it. You could either add on more blur to make it bigger. But if you don't want it bigger, well, you could do something like 200 and then just change the opacity of it. I'll take this down to 70 or, you know, I'm going to change it to 50. And we could take it a step further by adding more shapes. And we're going to do this one really quick. But I just want to show you how easy this, not easy, but how useful this really is right here. So we're going to create a shape. Let me give it a color. And this is just going to be a really small, small circle. I'm actually going to make this, okay, 10 pixels. Let's duplicate it. Move it over. And then I'm going to duplicate it several times. All right, that's enough. Let me highlight all of them. I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to duplicate the group. And let's get it close. You know, we want to make sure it's like perfect squares. That's close enough for right now. Let's go ahead and duplicate it several times. That's good enough. All right. Let's go ahead and group them. Now we have this background shape and it's a bit bold. So I'm going to take this down to 25 and now I could use this and combine it. Let me move it underneath the masked group. I could duplicate it by holding command D that'll duplicate it. And then I can move the second one around and we can move it right over here. And then we could start to play around with the positioning. But you see, this is how we could come up with some unique graphics right here. And this took only a few minutes to do. Like all these graphics I did, once you get the hang of it, you can start to do them quite quickly. I find the time, you know, the time I spend a lot 
in this is messing around with things like this. I do take a lot of time trying different things out, seeing what looks good, but this is where we have fun. This is where our creativity starts to flourish. All right, this is method two, and we are going to export these in a moment and upload them to Elementor, but I want to show you method three because this, I feel, is so underutilized right here, and this is being able to take a template say a template like this something that i've downloaded being able to use a resource in the template and then add them to my own designs here is an example here's another example we can see this design right over here this is a template that i got a ui template i paid for it so we're not only using this for a mock-up but we're using the different elements in it there are free templates out there which is open for free use and then there are paid templates as well and right now i'm getting my templates from envato elements and from ui8 but we could take this right here we could find the graphic like this grid graphic right here let me go ahead and copy this i'm just going to find it over here i'm going to copy it I'm going to go back over to my design and let me go ahead and click on here on my template so that way when I paste it with command V it'll go right into my design and there we go so if you want to use like a grid like this this is a useful way let's say I want to make this more in line with my style right here not exactly as it is in the template well I could go here I could select the lines either individually since they are all vectors I could change them or I could just click on the whole thing go over here to selection colors select on the color see okay where where is it being used okay here in this one we can see this is the white color. Let's go ahead and change this to our green color. So that way we can make this more like our style right here. I'm going to make this a bit darker. And now we have something that we got from another resource and we start to make changes to make it our own. Let me go ahead and move this off canvas. I'm going to download that in a minute. We're going to add that to the website. We're geeking out on this one. I love this kind of stuff. And then if we go back over to the one that I've already built, um, let me show you how I did this right here. So I found this. This was awesome. I found this on Envato. This is like a gold mine. When I see something like this, a resource like this, so many possibilities of what I could do, not just for the banner, but we could do this also in other sections on the website. The section is plain. You got a call to action section. Something has way too much space. Well, we could use this. All right, let me find the one I use, and that is this one. I'm going to copy it. Let me go over here to the one that I'm working on. I'm actually going to paste it off of it i don't want to put it on quite yet because it's purple it has an instance so i want to right click go to detach instance because i want to make this my own and when we click on it you can see it's you got the the blue bars covering everything we want to just get the group that we're going to work with so i'm going to take this group and i want to move it out of the frame so that way i could just work with this graphic and i'll delete that frame now here is where we start to make some changes so if i click on it you can see our selection colors is more on the blue side so i could go over here and change that blue color to the green color but take a look it's a blue color plus 20 percent so all i want to do is find my green color let me find that and let's take this down to 20 percent just like how it was before but just with a hint of green in fact i might even I'm going to take it down to 10%. All right, let's move this over here now. And we're going to have to move this behind our content in our menu. We're going to move it all the way to the back. Let's go ahead and expand it, make it big. And then from here, let me center it up. All right, now it's nice and centered. And now I am going to change the opacity on it because it's quite big. I do want the content easy to read. So by taking this down to 50%, and this all depends on your graphic, but check that out. Look at we already got it. Like, that is it. It is done. We are good to go. And this method right here, I find is it's awesome when you are trying to create some standout banners. So let me delete that really quick. Let me show you just one more right here. Just something really quick. So this is another really awesome kit that I found right here. And we can see this graphic. So I'm going to take this 
they call it a pattern back here. This graphic, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back over here to my banners and let me paste it here. Let's go ahead and push it behind the content, behind the menu. Oops, I got to make sure it is inside of the artboard. There it is. And let me center everything up and check that out. And it looks dope, but I do want to make a few tweaks to it so that way it fits my design and my color scheme. So I'm going to go to these boxes. And this is what I love about this method is that if it is a vector like this, then you got so much control over it. These boxes I selected, they all have the lighter color on top fading down to dark. I'm going to go to the fill. And then I can see the color right here. So I'm going to change this color and I'm going to select my green color. And it is a bit bright. So I'm going to reduce the opacity on it. I'll take it down to 30. And that means it's time for us to start adding these to Elementor. So let's go back over here to our shapes. What I want to do here is first I want to duplicate this because I'm going to delete all the other stuff. I just want to work with the graphic that's all there are two things that i could do with this one i could go to my banner over here to the whole artboard just select on the whole thing go to export and then choose jpeg and then i'm going to select on two times i want to make it a bit bigger we're going to optimize this inside my image tool right afterwards but here we go i'm just going to call this one all right now that is one method the other method now is I could export these graphics as an SVG. I'm going to move them over so that way they're all completely inside of the artboard. If you try exporting them when they're outside, then they'll get cut off or there's a chance they can get cut off. So I'm going to go over here just to these because I might be able to do something with these. And here is something that's really important to understand when you are doing this. First off, a PNG, it has a transparent background, but the file for a PNG is just way too big. It's going to slow your website down. I never use PNGs no matter what. I have workaround tricks for that, which I am going to show you. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to use an SVG, but here is another caveat. When you are creating things like this inside a Figma where you have gradients or you have shadows, whether it's outside shadows or inside shadows, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. It's a bit of a pain. If it works, it's great. But sometimes when you export it and upload it to Elementor, or it could be to Bricks, to Breakdance, to anything on WordPress, sometimes that SVG, since it is code, it gets read wrong and it doesn't look right. So we are going to try SVG first. All right. Now there is one more step that we should take before we just upload our images to Elementor, and that is adding them to a tool where we could optimize the image. We don't have to do that when it comes to SVG. We can see here that our image is only 3 KB. That is super, super tiny. This one right here, this is, let me see, it's 1.1 megabytes. So that is massive. That's way too big to add to a website. So what we're gonna do is take it to one of our tools. I use Affinity Photo. You could do this inside Photoshop, but I always use a tool like this before uploading to my WordPress website. I'm gonna change the size. I am going to move this down. Okay, we already have it at 80. I already did this earlier today. So I make sure my metadata and ICC profile are turned off. But now we can see that this is 35 KB, super tiny. So let me go ahead and save this. Let's go back to our Elementor site over here. And now let's go to our section, our outer container and add both. I'm going to upload both these images. I want to see if that SVG worked. If it did, that is going to be awesome. All right, let's go ahead and add this right here. All right, hey, that looks kind of, I like this color right here. This color looks pretty dope now that I see it on the screen. So let's change the position. I could change this to center, center, no repeat. And this is where we got to play with something. So we could put the display size, we could put it as cover. You know, I could play around with it. I could put, you know, auto, this actually looks really good. Like this looks really, really good. I would just go to this button right here 
and let me change the background i'm going to put a transparent color wow that looks dope now let's go back to our other graphic here now i'm going to do the same thing i am going to duplicate the whole artboard so that way i could delete all this and just work with the graphic so we have two different things that we could do with this one we could go ahead and use this as a background image i'm going to first change this right here adjust the size and i am going to export this I'm not going to use it as a PNG. We're only going to do JPEG when it comes to something like this. And now I'm going to export this. I'm going to just call this two. And now the next one. This is what I use most of the time whenever I deal with complex images that you would think need to be PNG. I am going to adjust the size. I'm going to make sure that this background right here is basically matching my background here. This color is going to be identical to the background here. You see, because a PNG has a transparent background, but we're going to use the same exact background color, so it's going to have the same effect. Let me tighten this up right here. I'm just going to squeeze this. Now, be very careful when you are using these blurs back here. If you have a blur that is bigger and it's going out, make sure to cover it. You want your entire edge to be that background color or else you're going to see a little bit of a line in the front. Now, let me go back over here and I am, let me put this back at two and I'm just going to call this 22 just so that way it is easy to do. Same thing, I am going to optimize them. And I know this bit is making the video a little bit longer, but I think it's important to show a real process, a full process of what it's like to make graphics for professional websites. Now from here, let me go ahead and change this. I, I would say a thousand pixels is more than enough. It's still kind of big, but I can live with that. I can live with 149. Okay, we're good there. Let me export that. And then we'll do the same over here. So we could do two things here. One, we could try to make this work as a background graphic. The only problem with that is when it goes mobile responsive, it's going to get cut off at some points. But depending on the style, it might work. We'll look at both ways of doing this. So let me upload both of the images. All right, we'll add this here. And then, okay, we'll make sure this is on full. We are going to center right. So we're going to push that all the way over, put on no repeat. Display size, we could put contain, or we could put auto, or we could even do custom on this one. This is where we have to start playing around with it, depending on what we are using now cover is going to make it the biggest but you got to test it out on your responsiveness but this right here it is working now another workaround let me go and duplicate this banner here i am going to remove this background graphic and now i'm going to put two containers right here so let me drop in a couple of containers and one more and we're going to put all the content inside this first container. Elementor makes this very easy to do. And then inside here, we are going to add an image widget. And then I'm going to add this widget right here. I want to show this because this is not just for banners and heroes. There are a lot of sections where you're going to have a graphic and you're going to have content throughout the page and this is one of those things that you will use quite often inside of those situations and now let me go to the outer container over here and i'm going to make this go side by side and then we could center everything up and there we go now we got our graphic here and we got more control over the size of our graphic let me change this to full so we get the full the full experience of the quality and then if we take a look at it you can see now we have our graphics over here and look at this was done really quickly but just to give you an idea you know you could create things like this using this mask technique you could also create things like this and like this right over here like these graphics and this all could be done in figma often when i am adding my graphics and creating them adding them to the websites i'll 
be making a lot of adjustments to them. Maybe I need to add more space. Maybe the top needs a little bit more space. So you got to kind of go through this process several times to dial it in and get it right. It all depends. Sometimes it happens really smooth and you just get lucky with a graphic like this one right over here. Like I just... I added this graphic in less than 30 seconds. It was crazy how fast I did it. And then sometimes, you know, you're going to work on something like this over here, which is going to take some time. You're going to want to play around and adjust it quite often. Now, let's go to our third one, and we're going to upload this. And again, we're going to do this a couple different ways. First, let me duplicate this. And before we do that, let me do something. I want to... You know, I saved this right here. Let me see. This is one that I got from a UI kit. And I'll show you those in a moment really quickly. But I'm going to export this. I'm going to call this. Yeah, I'll keep this as line. Do you know what? No, I'm going to call it 3, 3. And let's get this other graphic as well. This background graphic here. I'm going to go and select this and export this as an SVG. So let's do that. And I'll leave it as pattern. That is good. And then I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate this so I could remove everything. And I'm going to try two different things with this. Now, one, if I could export this and if it works, then that's awesome. That's going to be the best case scenario. But again, sometimes with these kind of inner shadows, with the gradients they don't always work in svg the only thing we could do is give it a try so i'm going to export this as an svg all right i'm going to call this 333 and then i'm going to export the whole thing as a jpeg i'm really hoping this svg works i haven't tried it out yet so I'm going to call 3333. Okay, let's go ahead and upload these images. So we're going to add them here. I'm going to go to my style and my images. And let's select on it. I just want to upload everything. And then let me get the other graphic as well. Which one was, I believe it was patterns. Yes, we're going to grab this. Now it looks like it's nothing in it. I'm not sure. In fact, let me select that and see. Okay, it worked. So this SVG worked right here. Let me go to full. I'm going to go to no repeat. And this time I'm going to use cover. So check this out. Now we have this background graphic. It looks cool. I really like this. And I got a trick to this right here. Do you know what I want to do? I want to make it fade right here. I want it to blend. I really like dark mode. I'm really into it. Let me go back over here to advance. And I am going to give it more space on the bottom. I want to get more space. I'm going to go back to my style, to my background overlay, use the gradient, choose the color that we are using on this. I believe it is the black one. I believe it's the darkest one. I'm going to choose the same color here. Yep, that looks right. Now I'm going to go back on this one and change my opacity down to zero. And then we want to go to the overall opacity, turn this to one. And now we could adjust this a bit right here. Let's move it up. I just want only this bottom, bottom part faded right here. It looks really dope when you do this right. Okay, I'll take this down to, you know, right there is good. So I would say 80. And then you could add another section in here. And you could put in your content in there and it kind of just flows. That's just one of the tricks that I use inside of my designs. Now, let me go back and I first want to give that SVG a try. Because if I could get the SVG to work, then that's best. Because look at it, it's only 5 KB. But we won't know until we actually put it in the front end. And hmm, let's see, it does look kind of weird. Uh, let me put on contain. You know, in a way, it doesn't look too bad. I might need to make it darker. I think I'm going to have to make it darker, but it doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's say auto. You know what? This looks kind of dope. Now, this is what I mean by adjusting it. So I'm going to go back here. I have it at 50%. Let me take it to 100%. Right, I'm going to export this SVG again. This time, let me just call it 555. All right. And let me replace that and upload it. And this is part of the process right here. 
Okay, wow, that looks so much better right there. And there we go. We have a super, super dope background to it. And look at, we could go over here, delete it, just using this method right here. Here was, I believe this was the grid. You know, you could add that grid line right there, which is a popular style. Uh, we could change this to, let me see, contain. And then we could put this at center bottom or bottom center and then we have another style right here and then from here we just try different things out and then you could use that other trick as well with the with the background overlay turning that into sort of a fade off effect I, I love geeking out on this and I know this video is a lot longer than what I was planning but this kind of stuff this is really important for a web design process now to find these resources here is my favorite this has been my favorite i've been using it for years now it's not cheap but the quality of stuff that you get is really good and the way i find things the first thing i do is i like to go to coded templates from here i like to go to web and then i always choose figma so i can see which ones have a figma file and then from here i could take a look let me open up in a tab and i could go to a live preview and see exactly how it's going to look live it helps me to understand the graphics a little bit better and i can see are there any resources i could use inside of this also another thing that i do in here is go to ui kits and then from here i select on web to filter it and then go to Figma as well. So that way I could look at the different mockups in here, the different uh, kits, and look for a style that I see some resources for graphics to use. The way I look at it is I pay good money for this to save time and to improve my workflow. Another good resource that is more cost effective is going to be Envato Elements. This is a really good one. You could go here and you can go to graphic templates select on figma and you can find a bunch of good stuff in fact this is where i found that one template right here this is crazy dope this is like when i was doing this video i found all kinds of cool stuff in a very short amount of time and even inside here when i was doing this video i found this one right here i just wanted to check it out i saw like these graphics look pretty cool and so i downloaded it i installed it into figma and then i got all of these graphics and i stumbled on a treasure mine right here of graphics in fact i'm going to be adding these on the new lightbox academy website that's coming out in a few weeks from now and again we're just finding different graphics adjusting them and we could go in when we find graphics like this and adjust it to our brand style if you are new to Figma, then I hope a video like this could help to open up, you know, your perspective on what you could do using this tool to help you with your web design process. And I got a lot more coming out, especially I got more Figma to Elementor videos is something that's probably the most requested that I get. So I have those inside of the works. And if you do want to grab these templates that I create inside of my videos, I'm always sharing them. I have a new community space inside of Circle. So you could go join for free, join our free community, and then you can get access to some of our free resources. And if you do want to become a pro member, well, then you're going to get you're going to get pro level stuff. I have links to everything inside the description and yeah you know the good youtube stuff like and subscribe if you did find this useful and helpful that's it for this video and i will see you inside the next one thank you